Mattel's Hot Wheels cars are toys which evoke high-speed racing and dangerous, death-defying stunts. This seems like it would translate well into a video game. Interestingly though, while Mattel had dabbled in video games for years, their only Hot Wheels game was a Commodore 64 game from 1984. This all changed in the mid-90s when Mattel, like many toy companies at the time, set forth into the world of PC software with the start of Mattel Media. They began with print shops, mostly featuring Barbie, and eventually moved into games, with Hot Wheels Stunt Track Driver being among their first efforts. The story of Mattel's adventures in PC software in the 90s is one that would be too long to do justice here with multiple companies involved. To make a long story short, they sold it off in 2000, and Mattel Media met its end in 2001. After that, THQ started publishing Hot Wheels games, carrying the license until about 2004, with various companies handling the license after that, leading to other games like Rocket League and Forza Horizon 3 featuring Hot Wheels cars. This video will take a look at a selection of games from the Mattel Media era. We'll start with the Stunt Track Driver games. They were developed by Semi-Logic. The first was released in 1998. The second, Getting Dirty, was released in 2000. Clint already covered these on Lazy Game Reviews, so I won't waste too much time on it here. Semi-Logic isn't known for much, though they collaborated with Mattel again on four of the five games from Mattel's ill-fated hyperscan console. The first stunt track driver sees you race Hot Wheels toy cars throughout the house performing barrel rolls, flat spins, and somersaults to boost your speed and unlock more cars, along with a track editor. The second takes the racing off-road and it's the same basic idea in terms of gameplay, but with a few changes like alternate routes and the track editor now being fully 3D. These games pioneered the stunt system found in later Hot Wheels games. I would argue that those games did it better since they didn't rely on the somewhat finicky FMV gameplay. That being said, Stunt Track Driver 1 and 2's simplicity and the nostalgia they bring keep me coming back for more. The track editor is a nice touch that should have been much more common than it was in the series, since building tracks is such a major part of Hot Wheels as a toy. Both games do a brilliant job of capturing the fun of playing with Hot Wheels and are worth a look if you happen to come across them. I managed to get one working without any issues. With two, your best bet is a virtual machine. I've gotten it to work with DG Voodoo before, but for some reason it didn't work on my last attempt. Hot Wheels Crash was released a year after Stunt Track Driver. It was developed by Prolific, a software company that made a few licensed games before going on to make screensavers, slot machines, and even software for Boeing. Also in 1999, they collaborated with Mattel on Matchbox Caterpillar Construction Zone. A departure from the racing games that would define the brand going forward, Crash is instead a puzzle game. Here, your job is to be the next Michael Bay, crashing cars into obstacles, adjusting the angle and speed, with the goal of causing the most destruction. Sometimes it's pretty obvious where you're supposed to launch the car. Sometimes you might have to adjust the angle or the timing slightly to hit everything, and other times the sweet spot is well hidden and you have to try a few times before getting it right. The biggest problem with this game is its lack of music. There's music in the menus, but in the game there's nothing but the sound effects. It makes the game feel lifeless and a little creepy, especially for one aimed at kids. Once you get into it though, you'll find yourself invested into the satisfaction of crashing cars, sinking ships, and knocking tower cranes onto buildings. Looking back on it today kind of reminds me of Crash Mode from the Burnout series, so if you enjoy those, you might like this as well. Personally, I think it was a good move to try and branch the Hot Wheels brand into genres other than racing, which became rare for it going forward. From a departure from racing to a very much conventional racing game, Hot Wheels Micro Racers rounds out the Mattel Media era. The game was developed by Unique Development Studios, a studio so obscure they don't even have a Wikipedia page. The most noteworthy game is the only one based on Futurama. When I played Micro Racers, I could tell right away it was lacking. Sure, it keeps the household racing aesthetic from the first stunt track driver, and puts it in a 3D game with a multiplayer component and a near-instantly recharging turbo boost, but that's about it. You won't find the unique stunt system from Stunt Track Driver here, or even weapons like Mario Kart. There are only three levels and seven cars in a game released in 2000. 
Furthermore, the game as a whole is a rather direct imitation of the Micro Machine series. The best I can say is that it plays well, even on modern hardware. Also, it's the first Hot Wheels game to feature the then new Dior 2, one of the most iconic Hot Wheels cars. So that's a short rundown of Mattel Media's Hot Wheels games. These games seek to take the fun of Hot Wheels and integrate it with engaging gameplay. They were inevitably followed by many more Hot Wheels games in the coming years, with THQ and other publishers putting their own spin on the worldwide toy car icon.